What is the world's longest suspension bridge? Ten years after construction began, Japan's Akashi Kaikyo Bridge also known as the Pearl Bridge was finally opened on April 5, 1998. It is the longest suspension bridge in the world. Stretching 12,828 feet 3 meters, across the Akashi Strait to link the city of Kobe with Awajishima Island. Its main span length, or center section, which is the way world's longest status is determined. Reaches 6,532 feet, 1,991 meters, between support columns. The span length is almost a quarter mile longer than the previous record holder, the store belt. Great Belt East Bridge in Denmark, which also opened in 1998. But this bridge may eventually lose its top dog status. The Italian government has approved plans to begin building what will be the longest suspension bridge in the world between mainland Italy and Sicily. It will be quite an engineering feat, with the main span stretching just over 10,827 feet, 3,300 meters. Interestingly enough, Japan and Italy are known to be tectonically active. With both receiving more than their fair share of volcanic eruptions and earthquakes, as well as, in Japan, tsunamis. What is a paradox? In logic, paradoxes are statements that seem to be self-contradictory or contrary to one's expectations. These arguments imply both a proposition and its opposite. One of the most famous paradoxes was stated by English logician Bertrand Russell. 1872-1970, in 1901 and deals with sets. If sets that are not members of themselves are normal, is the set of normal sets itself normal? How is a curve defined in geometry? A curve is a continuous collection of points drawn from one-dimensional space to n-dimensional space. It is also considered an object that can be created by moving a point. But note, our usual use of the word curve does not mean a straight line. But in mathematics, a line, or triangle is often referred to as a curve. Different forms of geometry define curves in various ways. Analytic geometry uses plane curves such as circles, ellipses, hyperbolas and parabolas which are usually considered as the graph of an equation or function. The properties of these curves are largely dependent on the degree of the equation in the case of algebraic curves. Curves with algebraic equations, or on the particular function. As in the case of transcendental curves, curves whose equations are not algebraic. Even more complex are space curves. All of which require special techniques used only in differential geometry. Will be the same as from B to A, and the distance between the points does not. Change if they are totally shifted over in one direction. 
such a sliding over of the points is called translation, for more on this, see elsewhere in this chapter. In addition, the Pythagorean theorem is valid for three points that are the vertices. The intersection points of the sides of an angle, of a right triangle. How are probabilities of compound events determined? Besides the probability of simple events, probabilities of compound events can also be computed. For example, if X and Y represent two independent events, the probability that both X and Y will occur is given by the product of their separate probabilities, and the probability that either of the two events will occur is given by the sum of their separate probabilities minus the probability that both will occur. For example, if the probability that a certain man will live to be 70 is 0.5, and the probability that his wife will live to be 70 is 0.6, the probability that they will both live to be 70 is 0.5 x 0.6 equals 0.3. The probability that either the husband or wife will reach 70 is 0.5 plus 0.6 0.3 equals 0.8. What is the beast number? The so-called beast number is 666, a number that is mentioned in Revelations 13:18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man and his number is 666. It is also thought of as the number of the Antichrist. There are other related numbers that have gained cult aspects, too. For example, a number having exactly 666 digits is called an apocalypse number. A number of the form 2 and that contains the digits 666 in other words. Powers of 2 that contain 3 consecutive 6s in the decimal representation is called an apocalyptic number. 2157 is one such number, it equals 182,687,704,000,000. Eight sixty four, comma seven seventy five, comma four sixty, comma six oh four, comma zero eighty nine, comma five thirty five, comma three seventy seven, comma four fifty six, comma nine ninety one, comma five sixty seven, comma eight seventy two. The first few such powers are one hundred and fifty seven, one hundred and ninety two, two hundred and eighteen, two hundred and twenty, and so on. There are also some interesting mathematical characteristics of the beast number that mathematicians have found as they played with numbers. For example, the beast number is equal to the sum of the squares of the first seven primes. Or 22 plus 32 plus 52 plus 72 plus 112 plus 132 plus 172 equals 666. It's a sum and difference of the first three sixth powers. 1626 plus 36 equals 666. There are exactly two ways to insert plus signs into the sequence of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to make the sum 666 and exactly one way for the sequence 9876543211 1 
1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 567 plus 89 equals 666 123 plus 456 plus 78 plus 9 equals 666 9 plus 87 plus 6 plus 543 plus 21 equals 666 Even more amazing is that the Dewey Decimal System classification number used in Libraries for numerology is 133.335, reverse the number and add to get 133.335 plus 533.331 equals 666.666 and Just as weird, if you write the first six Roman numerals, in order from largest to smallest. You get 666, Tlxi equals 666. In Indian numerology, for example, everyone has three relevant numbers that explain and predict human behavior. Psychic, destiny, and name numbers and they mean something different to each person. In Norse numerology, 3, 9, and multiples of 3 and 9 are magically potent. For example, the number 9 is significant in Norse magical practice and often points to Odin. Considered the supreme god in Germanic and Norse mythology, Odin, legend says. Hung himself from a tree for 9 days and nights, a time in which he learned 9 magical songs and 18 magical runes. In addition, there were nine realms of existence, 40 Norse Valkyries. And 13 Norse gods were present when Loki caused the death of Baldur. In China, the number 3 is lucky, and 8 is even luckier. 6 and 9 also run close behind. The number 6 implies that everything will go smoothly. 8 was originally favored by the Cantonese. Since in their language 8 means to make a great fortune in the near future, later. The Chinese favored the number, 9 implies something everlasting, especially in friendship and marriage. Numbers ending in these digits are often favored today when. Chinese people choose phone numbers, room numbers, and car licenses. As for unlucky numbers, 4, unlucky also in Japan, and 7 are at the top of the list. The former implying death and the latter meaning gone. 14 is also bad news. In fact, some cities in China ban the number from car licenses, and many buildings do not have 4th and 14th floors. How is infinity treated when discussing limits? Defining infinity is a definite part of calculus. Especially when discussing limits and negative and positive infinity. Whenever the inverse of a small number is taken, a large number is generated, and vice versa. In calculus, this is written as, 1 slash 0 equals plus or minus 0 but plus or minus 0 are no ordinary numbers. Because they do not obey the usual rules of arithmetic, such as 001 equals 00, 001 equals 00, 2x00 equals 00, and so on. Therefore, in calculus functions, and thus limits, infinity is treated much differently. What is the air quality index?
Mathematics plays an important part in the Air Quality Index, AQI, a scale developed by the U.S. government to measure how much pollution is in the air. The AQI measures five specific pollutants, ozone, particulate matter, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen dioxide. The levels range from zero, good air quality, to 500, hazardous air quality, the higher the index. The higher the level of pollutants and the greater the likelihood of detrimental health effects. How was the area of a circle first determined? When it comes to determining the area of a circle, there are many historical claims to this solution. One of the earliest techniques may have been the Chinese comb method, in which a circle is cut into n wedges, each 360 slash n degrees and each piece identical, with the same area. To see how this works, take the bottom half of a unit circle and cut it into wedges like slices of a pie. Place all the wedges next to each other, with the points up, like the teeth of a comb or animal. Then split the top half of the circle in the same way. Putting them next to each other above the other wedges, but this time point the tips of the wedges down. Close the teeth, as n goes to infinity, the shape of the combined wedges approaches a rectangle. What is balancing a checkbook? Balancing a checkbook is often a challenge. For some people, forgetting to enter checks written against or deposits made into the account creates the biggest balancing problems. For others, it is not depositing enough money to cover written checks. There really is no art to keeping a checkbook. It is just a matter of checks and balances or debits and credits and a little bit of simple mathematics. To keep a healthy checkbook, there are several things a person can do. For example, keep a running balance of distributed checks in a check ledger. Whenever you write a check, write the amount in the ledger booklet most banks give with the checks. In the proper column, list the check number, who the check is made out to, and any other important information. The amount in the negative, dash, or debit, column, and subtract the check amount from the last balance. Along with making out checks, taking out money, keep a record of deposits made in the checkbook register. Deposits are usually written in the positive column, plus, or credit. Don't let the money get low if the account balance goes into negative numbers. The account does not have enough money to cover the checks. If more money is not put into the checking account at this point, the checks will bounce. Or not clear with sufficient funds. This is not good. Most banks charge substantial fees to the account owner for bounced checks, not the person to whom the check is made out. Whenever you receive your bank statement, check to see if the balance agrees with your checkbook. This is called balancing the checkbook. As you compare the checks that have cleared with the listing in the register, 
check each off with an X or check mark. Also subtract any bank charges, such as ATM, automated teller machine, fees. If all of the checks have cleared, and all charges have been accounted for, the balance of the checkbook and statement should agree, unless the bank gives interest on checking accounts. If so, add the interest to the checkbook under the plus or credit column. If not all the items have cleared, check the bank statement and note the ones not marked. Total all these outstanding transactions. Subtract the total of the outstanding transactions from the end balance on the bank statement. Then add any deposits that are not on the bank statement to this new balance. The numbers should match the balance in the check register. If they don't, go back over the addition and subtraction in the checkbook register to catch any inaccuracies. Which is often the reason why a checkbook doesn't balance. What is radioactive decay? Mathematics can also be applied to radioactive substances found within certain rocks. Radioactive decay is the disintegration of a radioactive substance and the emission of certain ionizing radiation. Such as alpha or beta particles or even gamma rays. Simply put, when rocks form, the minerals within the rock often contain certain radioactive atoms that decay at a specific rate. Radioactive decay is especially important in radioactive dating, in which the original and decayed radioactive elements are used to determine the age of the rock. This is because certain radioactive elements will decay to a mixture of half the original element and half another element, or isotope, in a specific time frame. This is also called the half-life of the original element. For example, half of the uranium-238 in a rock will decay into lead-207 in 704 million years. Thus, the half-life of uranium-238 is said to be 704 million years. Statistically, this change follows a specific decay function for each isotope of an element. And in each of these exponential functions, the time for the function's value to decrease to half is constant. Making radioactive dating perfect in determining the age of certain rocks. What are the different categories of modern calculus? Modern calculus is divided into numerous types. The following lists just a few of these categories, basic calculus basic calculus is the branch of mathematics concerned with limits and with the differentiation and integration of functions. There is also advanced calculus, which takes an even more complex view of calculus, with an emphasis on proofs. Differential calculus Differential calculus deals with the variation of a function with respect to changes in the independent variable, s. It does this by determining derivatives and differentials. Integral calculus Integral calculus, logically. 
deals with integration and its application to solve differential equations, it is also used to determine areas and volumes. Other various analyses Other parts of calculus entail various types of analyses. Such as vector, tensor, and complex analyses, and differential geometry. Also remember that the term calculus is a generic name for any area of mathematics dealing with calculation. Thus, arithmetic could be called the calculus of numbers. It is also why there are such terms as imaginary calculus or a method of looking at the relationships between real or imaginary quantities using imaginary symbols and quantities. In algebra that do not mean the type of calculus discussed elsewhere in this chapter. What are Kepler's laws of planetary motion? A great deal of mathematics went into the formulation of Kepler's laws of planetary motion. These laws were devised by German astronomer and mathematician and Danish astronomer Tycho Ubras 1546-1601 assistant, Johannes Kepler, 1571-1630. He presented the first and second laws in his work Astronomia Nova, New Astronomy. In 1609, the third law was published in 1619 in Harmonis Mundi. The three laws are as follows. Kepler's first law, or law of elliptic orbits, each planet moves about the Sun in an orbit that is an ellipse. With the Sun at one of the two foci of the ellipse. Kepler's second law, or the law of areas, an imaginary straight line joining a planet to the Sun will sweep out equal areas of the ellipse in equal periods of time. Kepler's third law, or the harmonic law, the square of the period of a planet's revolution is directly proportionate to the cube of the semi-major axis of its orbit. What is the algebraic concept of inverse? Inverses in algebra are operations, or numbers, that undo each other. For example, if one multiplies 4 by its inverse, or 1 fourth, the solution is 1, thus. The rule for multiplicative inverse for x, with x asterisk 0, is 1 slash x, as in x 1 slash x, equals 1. In addition, if you add minus 4 to 4, you get 0, 0, thus, the additive inverse of x is x, as in x plus, x, equals 0. What is the value of pi? Pi is a number, a constant, and to 20 decimal places it is equal to 3.14159265358979323846. But it doesn't end there, pi is an infinite decimal. In other words, it has an infinite number of numbers to the right of the decimal point. Thus, no one will ever know the end number for pi. Not that mathematicians will stop trying any time soon.
Today's supercomputers continue to work out the value of pi, and to date. Researchers have taken the number to more than 200 billion places. For more about pi and computers, see math in computing. How do you find the roots of a polynomial? Finding the root, also called a zero, of a polynomial is one way to solve for the equation. In other words, the root of an equation is simply a number, or numbers, that solves the equation. For example, for second degree polynomials we can find the roots by completing the square. Picking apart an equation is the best way to see this, 1 3 x 2 4 x plus 1 equals 0 2. 1 3rd, 3 x 2 4 x plus 1, equals. 1 3rd, 0, making the coefficient of the x 2 term into a 1, 3. x 2, 4 thirds, x plus 1 3rd equals 0 4. x 2, 4 thirds, x. Plus 1 3rd equals 0. Group the x and x2 terms together, 5. x2, 4 thirds, x plus, minus 2 thirds, 2, minus 2 thirds, 2 plus 1 third equals 0, determine the coefficient of the x term. Divide it by 2 and then square, add and subtract that term, 6. x2 thirds, 2 4 ninths plus 1 third equals 0, x 2 thirds, 2 1 ninth equals 0, add together the 4 ninths plus 1 third by converting the denominator to 9, in which 1 third becomes 3 ninths. x 2 thirds, 2 equals 1 ninth, move the 1 ninth to the other side of the equation by subtracting it from both sides. 9 x 2 thirds equals 1 third or x 2 thirds equals minus 1 third that means that x equals 1 or x equals 1 third are the two roots that make the equation true. Just substitute either number into the initial equation to see that they are both true. When was the equal sign introduced into mathematics? He equals sign, smiley face, is a relatively new invention in mathematics. It was first used by British mathematician Robert Record, 1510-1558, also seen erroneously as record. In his book The Whetstone of Wit, 1557, the first algebra book introduced in England. In it he justifies using two parallel line segments by cos no two things can be more equally sick, because no two things can be more equal than parallel lines. It was not an immediately popular symbol, though, with mathematicians continuing to use a range of symbols for equal. Including the two parallel lines. Used by Wilhelm Zeilander in 1575, and A.E. or O.E., both from the word equalis, the Latin for equal. But for the most part, the word equal was written in an equation until around 1600. When record symbol became more readily accepted, and it continues to be so today. What is the pH scale? The pH scale stands for P, potential of, H, hydrogen, 
scale. Or the logarithm of the reciprocal of hydrogen ion concentration in gram atoms per liter. In simpler terms, the pH is merely the measure of the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution. The pH numbers are based on a scale from 0 to 14, in which numbers less than 7 represent acidic solutions and numbers greater than 7 represent alkaline, base, solutions. A reading of 7 is considered neutral. Mathematically speaking, once the concentration of hydrogen ions is determined chemically. Based on moles per liter, the pH value is established by taking. The exponent used in expressing this concentration and reversing its sign. It is most often expressed as the notation pH equals log 10 H plus. For example, if the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution is determined to be 10 to 4, or 0.0001, moles per liter. The pH is 4. Many people are familiar with the pH scale from high school. Especially the practice of using special whitish paper called litmus paper to check for pH. The paper contains a powder extracted from certain plants, allowing the user to determine acidity, the paper turns red. Neutrality, the paper stays white, or alkalinity, the paper turns blue, of various solutions. The stronger the acid or base, the more intense the red or blue, respectively. And pH isn't just for use in chemistry class. For example, it is also important to people who work the soil. All plants need a certain soil pH to grow and flourish. Which is why most gardeners and farmers determine the acidity or alkalinity of their soil in order to grow better crops. How is mathematics used by search engines on the World Wide Web? www. A search engine is a program that searches for internet documents. Usually on the World Wide Web, using certain keywords. It then returns a list of results in which those keywords are found. Search engines such as Google, AltaVista, and Excite are a general class of programs that use a proprietary search algorithm. They rely on probability, linear algebra, and graph theory to create a list that, ideally, produces the most relevant website results for the user. What is a limit of a sequence? The limit of a sequence is simply the number that represents a kind of equilibrium reached in the sequence. It is also phrased approaches as closely as possible. Limit is also a term used in calculus in relation to a function, see elsewhere in this chapter. How do you perform imaginary number computations? Imaginary numbers come in handy to do many computations, especially something called simplification.
What were Aristotle's syllogisms? Syllogisms, which are often attributed to Aristotle, are the verbal versions of the formal deductive rules for logic. Aristotle believed that any logical argument could be explained in these standard forms. He divided them into a major premise, all squirrels eat nuts, a minor premise. Fred is a squirrel, and a conclusion derived by a rule of logic, Fred eats nuts. The classical syllogism is, all men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Therefore Socrates is mortal. This form of logic called syllogistic logic would dominate Western cultural thought for more than 2,000 years. What are examples of unlucky and lucky numbers in different cultures? The concept of lucky and unlucky numbers in various cultures abounds. As many people agree, it's actually the luck of the draw that determines a lucky or unlucky number. Some cultures have tried to attach good or bad fortunes to numbers. For example, in terms of good luck and fortune, the number 7 seems very popular in many cultures. It is the holy number, symbolizing God in all forms, and is considered sacred to many people. The Japanese, for instance, have seven gods of good fortune, the Egyptian god Hathor can be seven cows at once. And there are the seven days of creation in the Bible, actually, the seventh was a day of rest. On the other hand, the same number can represent something that is bad. For example, many mythological monsters have seven heads, in Native American lore. The Sioux saltwater snake Unscala could only be killed by a blow to her seventh spot. And the seven deadly sins avarice, envy, gluttony, lust, pride, sloth, and wrath is a western cliché. One famous unlucky number is 13, which is thought by most Western people to be bad luck because of the connection between Judas Iscariot, the disciple and betrayer of Jesus who was the 13th man in the room at the Last Supper. But in other places, such as Italy and China, 13 is considered lucky. Even ancient civilizations did not shy away from the number 13. In the Celtic and Native American systems of astrology, there were 13 lunar months in the year and 13 astrological signs. What is Boolean algebra? Boolean algebra is an abstract mathematical system used to express the relationship between sets, groups of objects or concepts. It is important in the study of information theory, the theory of probability, and the geometry of sets. The use of Boolean notation in electrical networks aided the development of switching theory and the eventual design of computers. It was English mathematician George Boole, 1815-1864, who first developed this type of logic by demonstrating the algebraic manipulation of logical statements, showing whether or not a statement is true. 
and showing how a statement can be made into a simpler, more convenient form without changing its overall meaning. Today, this way of looking at logic is called Boolean algebra. For more information about Boole, see History of Mathematics. Boolean algebra did not end there, in 1881 the English logician and mathematician John Venn. 1834-1923, interpreted Boole's work and introduced a new way of diagramming Boole's notation in his treatise Symbolic Logic. This was later refined by the English mathematician Charles Dodgson, 1832-1898, who was better known as the writer of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, under the pseudonym Lewis Carroll. Today, when studying sets, we call this method not the Boole. Carroll, or Dodgson diagram, but the Venn diagram. Thus, Boolean notation demonstrates the relationship between groups. Indicating what is in each set alone, what is jointly contained in both, and what is present in neither. Geometry is the study of figures or objects in space of a certain number of dimensions. And types and focuses on the properties and measurements of points, lines, angles. Surfaces, and solids of those objects, or sometimes even the space around them. The word geometry is from the Greek words for earth and to measure. Geometria, broken down into GE and metrian, respectively. A person who studies geometry is called a geometer or geometrician. What are the various types of polyhedra? As with most forms, polyhedra are divided into many names, depending on the number of faces. What mathematical concept is used to calculate mortgage payments? In most cases, a mortgage is based on amortization, which is the gradual elimination of a liability. A financial obligation or debt, such as a mortgage, in regular Fixed, systematic payments, such as monthly, over a specific period of time. These payments must be enough to cover both the principal borrowed and the interest. Although it is usually written in a complex set of mathematical calculations, simply put amortization means a part of the Payment goes toward the interest cost and the remainder goes toward the principal, or the amount borrowed. The interest is then recomputed on the amount owed. And therefore it gets smaller and smaller as the ending balance of the loan becomes less and less. That is why the homeowner pays a great deal toward interest and not the principal for the first several years of a home mortgage. For example, if a mortgage is taken out for $100,000 at 6.5% for 30 years, the fixed monthly principal and interest payment is $632.07 for the first month. The homeowner pays interest on the $100,000 or $541.67, with the remainder of the payment, $90.40, going toward principal. 
In other words, the debt on the principal is reduced by $90.40. By the next month, the homeowner owes interest on a lesser amount of money on $99,909.60, or $100,000.90.40. Not the $100,000, with $541.18 going toward interest and $90.89 going toward principal. As payments are made month after month, the interest decreases and the principal reduction increases. By the 360th payment, or 30 years later, the payment contributes $3.41 to interest and $628.66 to principal. What is a numeral? A numeral is a standard symbol for a number. For example, X is the Roman numeral that corresponds to 10 in the standard Hindu Arabic system. How is the magnitude of a vector determined? The magnitude of a vector is equivalent to the length of a vector. Placing a pair of vertical lines, similar to the absolute value symbol. Around a vector implies the magnitude of the vector. For example, if the variable v is used to represent a vector, then the expression v indicates the magnitude of the vector. How were mathematics and religion intertwined in ancient times? One of the first references to religion and mathematics was around 4000 BCE, although this date is highly debated. Through the Vedic religion, which is followed by the Indo-Aryan peoples. Two works written in Vedic Sanskrit were the Vedas and Vedanas, both of which not only discuss religion, but also include a great deal of astronomical and mathematical knowledge throughout the text. Another connection between religion and mathematics grew through the practice of astrology, which is thought to have started around the 4th century BCE by the Babylonians. Astrology, the belief that celestial bodies control the affairs and fates of individuals kings, and nations, was a kind of religion in ancient times. It was based on the position of the moon, planets, and constellations. In order to practice astrology, the astrologer needed an extraordinary knowledge not only of astronomy, but also of mathematics, including the use of algorithms to calculate some of the predictive results. Still another connection is the one between Christianity and math. Although it is often debated whether mathematics affected Christianity more or vice versa. What is known is that people who studied math and science in the past were often deeply entrenched in Christianity. For example, in the 16th and 17th centuries, Great scientists such as Galileo Galilei, 1564-1642, Johannes Kepler, 1571-1630, Isaac Newton, 1643-1727,
and Nicolaus Copernicus, 1473-1543. Were all deeply religious Christians who saw their scientific works as a religious undertaking. To actually list all the other connections between religion, science, and mathematics is far beyond the scope of this book. But as English physicist Freeman Dyson, 1923, once said, one of the basic connections came as the result of theological debate. And such arguments nurtured analytical thinking that could be applied to the analysis of natural phenomena. What are the Lotka Volterra Interspecific Competition Logistic Equations? The Lotka Volterra Interspecific Competition Logistic Equations are concerned with the predator prey relationships between species in the environment and are based on differential equations, for more on differential equations, see mathematical analysis. Such predator-prey theories were developed independently by then Austrian, now the Ukraine. Chemist, demographer, ecologist, and mathematician Alfred James Lotka. 1880-1949 and Italian mathematician Vito Volterra, 1860-1940, in 1925. They refer to interspecific competition. Or the competition between two or more species for some limiting resource, such as food, nutrients. Space, mates, nesting sites, or anything in which the demand is greater than the supply. Most people think about the AQI in terms of being outdoors and most. Weather broadcasts include air quality listings, especially in larger cities. When the readings are high, people are warned not to participate in strenuous activities like sports or hard work outside. People with asthma or other lung problems are urged to stay inside. What is the Monte Carlo method? The Monte Carlo method gives approximate numerical solutions to a number of problems that are too difficult to solve analytically by performing specific statistical sampling experiments. Although forms of the method have been known for a while, it was initially developed for numerical integrations in statistical physics problems during the early days of electronic computing. It was named after the city in the Monaco Principality, some say. Because of the simple random number generator of roulette played in the Monaco casinos. Others say the method's creator was honoring a relative who had a propensity toward gambling. But there is more to the Monte Carlo method than meets the computation. For one thing, there is more than one Monte Carlo method. For example, one method, called the Markov chain Monte Carlo method, has played a critical role in such diverse fields as physics, statistics, computer science, and structural biology. And the list of applications continues, as recently as the late 1990s. Researchers and statisticians began to realize the usefulness and power of Monte Carlo methods for prediction.
is math used to describe the strength of materials? Material science is also a major part of engineering, and includes a great deal of mathematics. For example, engineers need to know how materials stand up to stress and strain from the pressure of either a structure or overlying materials. A basic understanding of how structures respond to the action of forces and how these forces affect the performance of various building materials, such as wood, steel, concrete, and so on, is essential. What is a geometric series? If we add the numbers in a geometric sequence, we end up with a geometric series. A geometric series is obtained when each term is determined from the preceding one by multiplying by a common ratio. There is a constant ratio between terms. For example, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus. And so on, is a geometric series because each term is determined by multiplying the preceding term. By January 2nd. To find the sum of a geometric series, the formula is, sum equals a, rn1, slash, r1 or a, 1 r n, slash, 1 r, in which a is the first term, r is the common ratio, and n is the number of terms. For example, to find the sum of the first six terms of a series represented by 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 54 plus 162 plus 486, define a equals 2, R equals 3, and N equals 6. Substitute the numbers, sum equals 2, 36 1, slash 3 1 equals 729 1 equals 728. We could also have determined this number based on the first few numbers, such as 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 54, as long as we knew the common ratio the first number, and how many numbers in the series we wanted to add. This is something that can easily be determined based on just these four numbers. How old is the study of fluid mechanics? According to many historians, fluid mechanics may be the oldest subfield in physics and engineering. In particular, ancient civilizations needed to control water flow for agricultural development. Drinking water supplies, and transportation. Thus, the development of fluid mechanics which is the study of the motion and behavior of fluids, led to even more, and complex, improvements. For example, agricultural requirements led to irrigation waterways, dams, weirs, pumps, and even crude forms of sprinkler systems, the need for a potable, drinkable, water supply led to better wells fountains, and water storage systems, and water transportation innovations included improved sails and rigs, as well as methods to build and waterproof sailing vessels. But early fluid mechanical studies did not end there. Over time, they extended into almost every realm of science and engineering. 
For example, mechanical engineering uses fluid mechanics because of the need to know about fluids used in combustion. Ships and automobiles, lubrication, from the smaller inner workings of a will to larger mechanisms such as locks along a canal, and energy systems, hydroelectric power. Civil engineering utilizes fluid mechanical studies to interpret how fluid systems traveled over structures. Aqueducts and pipes carrying drinking or waste water. Electrical engineers use fluid flow to analyze how to cool electronic devices with either air or water. Even early, and current, aeronautical engineers needed to know how air flowed over an airplane wing. Providing the much needed lift that allows a plane to become airborne. How did applied mathematics grow over time? Historically speaking, applied mathematics was always concerned with using mathematics to solve problems in physics. Chemistry, medicine, engineering, the physical sciences, technology, and biology. In fact, applied mathematics is older than pure mathematics. As it was used in areas that formed the core of early physics research, such as mechanics, fluid dynamics, and optics. As mathematical tools became more powerful, these areas of physics became more mathematically based. This mathematical analysis tied to science and engineering has always had a great place in history and has led to some of its greatest discoveries. What are some examples of Egyptian multiplication? Egyptian multiplication methods did not require a great deal of memorization. Just a knowledge of the two times tables. For a simple example, to multiply 12 times 16, they would start with 1 and 12. Then they would double each number in each row. 1x2 and 12x2, 2x2 and 24x2, and so on. Until the number 16, resulting in the answer 192, another example computes a number that is not a multiple in the row. Such as 37 times 19, first, do the usual procedure by starting with 1 and 19, then doubling the numbers until you get to 32, if you double 32 equals 64, you've overshot the number 37. Because 37 is higher than 32, go back over the list on the left hand side, figure out which numbers. With 32, add up to 37, 1, 4, and 32, then add the numbers that correspond to those numbers. To the right, 19, 76, and 608, which equals the answer, 703 and you didn't even need a calculator. What are arithmetic series and sequences? An arithmetic series also called arithmetic progression is one of the simpler types of series in mathematics. In such a series, each new term is the previous number plus a given number, it is usually seen in the form of A+. 
a and d plus a plus 2d plus a plus 3d plus a plus n1 d an example of an arithmetic series would be 2 plus 6 plus 10 plus 14 plus and so on in which d is equal to 4 the initial term is the first one in the series the difference between each term d or 4 in this case is called the common difference an arithmetic sequence is usually in the form of a a and d a plus 2d a plus 3d and so on in which a is the first term and d is the constant difference between the two successive terms throughout an example of an arithmetic sequence is 1 4 7 10 13 in which the difference is always a constant of 3 the notation for arithmetic sequences is n plus 1 equals n plus d. What is the graphic representation of the approximation of an area under a curve using integration? It's easier to see the approximate area under a curve using integration by means of graphs it all has to do with rectangles. The idea is to extend lines from the ends of the curve, here, f, x, to the z-axis, or y-axis, depending on the curve. We'll call the total area under the curve n then divide the entire area under the curve into equal width sections x1, x2, x3, and so on, that are equal to parts of n, the subregions n1, n2, and so on. The next step is to figure out the area of a rectangle if each section was cut off below the curve and then above the curve. This creates rectangles defined by left-hand right end points. From the left-hand right sums, and a few more calculations, we can approximate the area of N. What is the reciprocal of a number? The reciprocal of a number is obtained when a given number is divided into 1. The results are called the reciprocal of that number. For example, the reciprocal of 6 is 1 divided by 6, or 1 sixth. Reciprocals come in most handy when dividing fractions. See above to learn more about dividing fractions. What is Fisher's fundamental theorem of natural selection? Evolutionary biologist, geneticist, and statistician Sir Ronald Aylmer Fisher. 1890-1962, first proposed Fisher's fundamental theorem of natural selection in 1930. A mathematical concept. It states that the rate of evolutionary change in a population is proportional to the amount of genetic diversity available. He is also often credited with creating the foundations for modern statistical science. What is a group in abstract algebra? A group, usually referred to as G, 
is a finite or infinite set of elements together with a binary operation. Often called the group operation. That together satisfy the four fundamental properties closure, associativity, and the identity and inverse properties. For more information about these properties, see elsewhere in this chapter. A great many of the objects investigated in mathematics turn out to be groups. Including familiar number systems such as the integers, rational, real, and complex numbers under addition, nonzero rational. Real, and complex numbers under multiplication, non-singular matrices under multiplication, and so on. The branch of mathematics that studies groups is called group theory. An important area of mathematics that has many applications to mathematical physics, such as particle theory. Who built the first mechanical binary computer? German civil engineer Konrad Zuss, 1910-1995, built the Z1 often thought of as the first mechanical binary computer in his parents' living room around 1938. His goal was to build a machine that would perform the lengthy and tedious calculations needed to design building structures. His computer's design stored intermediate results in its memory and performed sequences of arithmetic operations that he programmed on punched paper tape, he initially used old movie film. This machine led to the Z3 in 1941, considered by some to be the first large-scale fully functional automatic digital computer, the computer used a binary number system. Why is Laplace transform important in engineering? Laplace transform is a way to solve linear differential equations and Translate them into simple algebraic problems that are easier to solve. It was developed by French mathematician and theoretician Marquis Pierre Simon de Laplace, 1749-1827. Although it carries his name, the Laplace transform seems to have been first used by Denis Poisson, 1781-1840, in 1815. Today, it is used extensively in electrical engineering problems. What is a tangram? Some puzzle forms go back thousands of years such as the tangram, which is also known as a dissection puzzle. The tangram is of Chinese origin literally called the seven board of cunning but. The word itself is of English origin, and is built from the words tang. Thought to be a synonym for Chinese in the Cantonese dialect, and gram. It is thought that the Pythagorean theorem was discovered in Asia before Pythagoras's time with the help of tangram pieces. For more about the Pythagorean theorem, see geometry and trigonometry. The tangram consists of a square divided into seven pieces called tens. All of which must be arranged to match particular designs, usually a square.
who was one of the most prolific mathematicians who ever lived. Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler, 1707-1783 Is considered to be one of the most prolific mathematicians who ever lived. In fact, his accomplishments are beyond the scope of this text. Suffice it to say that his collected works number more than 70 volumes, with contributions in pure and applied mathematics. Including the calculus of variations, analysis, number theory, algebra, geometry, trigonometry, analytical mechanics, hydrodynamics, and the lunar theory, calculation of the motion of the moon. Euler was one of the first to develop the methods of the calculus on a wide scale. His most famous book, Elements of Algebra, rapidly became a classic. And he wrote a geometry textbook, Yale University was the first American college to use the text. Although half-blind for much of his life and totally blind for his last 17 years she had a near legendary skill at calculation. Among his discoveries are the differential equation named for him, a formula relating the number of faces, edges, and vertices of a polyhedron, although Euler's formula was discovered earlier by René Descartes. And a famous equation connecting five fundamental numbers in mathematics. Like many in the Bernoulli family, Euler eventually worked at the Academy of Sciences in St. Petersburg, Russia, a center of learning founded by Peter the Great. Who first made some of the first accurate measurements of the Earth? Hellenic geographer, librarian, and astronomer Eratosthenes of Cyrene. 276 to 194 BCE, made several accurate measurements of the Earth. Which is why he is often known as the father of geodesy, the science of Earth measurement. Although he was not the very first to deduce the Earth's circumference. Eratosthenes is thought by most historians to be the first to accurately measure it. Eratosthenes knew the sun's light at noon reached the bottom of a well in Syene. Now Aswan on the Nile River in Egypt, meaning the sun was directly overhead, on the summer solstice. He compared it to a well's shadow at the same time in Alexandria. Knowing that the zenith distance, the angle from the zenith point directly overhead to the point where the sun was at noon, was zero degrees at Syene, this meant that at Alexandria it was about seven degrees. By measuring these angles and the distance between the two cities, Eratosthenes used geometry to deduce that the Earth's circumference was 250,000 stadia. The number was later revised to 252,000 stadia, or 25,054 miles, 40,320 kilometers. The actual circumference of the planet is 24,857 miles, 40,009 kilometers, around the poles and 24,900 miles. 40,079 kilometers, around the equator, because the Earth is not completely round. From his data Eratosthenes also determined another accurate measurement, the Earth's diameter. 
he deduced the Earth was 7,850 miles, 12,631 kilometers, in diameter. Which is close to the modern mean value of 7,918 miles, 12,740 kilometers. What are some examples of weather prediction models? Because there is more than one group carrying out weather predictions. There are many computer models used by meteorologists around the world. For example, the United States National Weather Service's weather predictions are carried out at the National Centers for Environmental Prediction, NCEP. The NCEP runs several different computer models each day to determine the best weather forecasts. Some are used for short-term forecasting, others for the longer term. And some are used for global or hemispherical predictions, while others are only regional. They include several mathematically intensive computer models. For more information about computer modeling, see Math in Computing. NGM NGM, or the nested grid model, is one in which observations are converted to values at various points that are evenly spaced. Making it easy for the computer programs to plug them into equations. This model is now considered to be obsolete. ETA The ETA model was named after the ETA coordinate system, which is a mathematical coordinate system that takes into account topographical features, such as mountains. It is similar to the NGM model and forecasts the same atmospheric variables. But its smaller grid gives a more detailed forecast. ABN, MRF, and GSM The ABN model, MRF, medium range forecast. And the GSM, global spectral model, convert data into a large number of mathematical waves. They then return the waves in a manner that will produce a forecast map. ECMUF The ECMUF, European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts is considered to be one of the most advanced weather forecast models in the world, it is mostly used for the Northern Hemisphere. UCMIT The UCMIT, United Kingdom Meteorology Offices Model also gives forecasts for the entire Northern Hemisphere. MM5 The MM5, Meso Scale Model No. 5, and WRF, weather research forecast model, are actually the same models. The MM5 has long been a research computer model for smaller geographic forecast regions such as Antarctica. The WRF is the name for MM5 as an operational model, not just for research. <laughs>